Dr. Fabi, you are welcome. Over to you. Thank you very much for having me. Um, can I ask if you can hear me okay? Sure. Yeah, we can find you, Jack. That's lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, today, I'm very privileged to uh, be invited by Nelta to present my project. Uh, this is something that uh, I've been doing for the past few years, and since the um, like since COVID nineteen, because so many students in Hong Kong have to stay at home and learn classes, uh, take their lessons uh, online. Uh, we have a surge of users uh, of Edom's trip, and so it's an uh, it's a vocabulary learning app uh, that allows learners to uh, learn English vocabulary through YouTube videos. Um, so I'm going to uh, give a, a demonstration of what this app is about. And then if colleagues are interested in using the app, um, it's actually everyone can actually download, uh, not download, but actually go online to this website www.idiomstrip.com uh, to register for a free account. So uh, the materials, um, uh, this website is actually available to all for free. And then uh, this is how uh, colleagues uh, may register for individual accounts. But then if you want to enroll your students in my project, uh, so your whole schools will be joining this uh, for free, then you can contact me afterwards because I've got uh, information about how you can enroll your students uh, in the program. Um, so uh, you can take a look at this website uh, later on. Um, I have to thank, before I begin my presentation, I have to thank Professor Kreshen yesterday because it was such an enlightening talk that he gave. I learned so much uh, from his talk and I got a few interesting points from his uh, presentation. I think he said, uh, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but then I thought, hmm, he said, input becomes intake when you uh, provide optimal input. And then what is meant by optimal input is, um, uh, there, there are four characteristics of optimal input. First, the input must be comprehensible. Uh, two, um, there must be lots of input to choose from, many materials for people to choose from. Uh, three, the material is extremely interesting. And then four, the content must be rich. And um, Professor Krashen thinks that reading is an amazing idea for learning foreign language. He gave us the example of learning uh, Spanish. Um, and then he also said, that we need to give learners the freedom to choose whatever they want to learn English from. Uh, learners must be able to uh, choose any books that they want to read. And then when learners uh, enjoy what they are reading, whatever they are reading, their effective filter is low, and then uh, we will have great learning outcomes. So I learned so much. I can't, I can't express how much I learned from Professor Krashen, but then I had two, immediate reactions. Number one, uh, yeah. So Professor Krashen talked about the importance of reading for language learning. But then um, in Hong Kong, for example, uh, learners actually prefer uh, popular media like videos or English videos or English songs to reading. Um, so in a survey that I did uh, in 2018, I asked 30, uh, 300 local Hong Kong students, uh, what do they do uh, to learn English outside of the classroom? 70% of them told me that they prefer to learn English through popular media. And 10% of them even spend five or more hours on this activity. So hmm, while Professor Krashen talked about the benefits of reading, it seems that learners today may not be so interested in reading. Um, this is like what we often see in Hong Kong, people looking down at their mobile phones. I think in the city, in Nepal, uh, learners, uh, students and adults also do the same, everyone looking at their phones all the time. So, so much about um, giving learners, uh, letting learners learn English through what they prefer. And the truth is maybe that most learners prefer videos, video content, which provides multimedia uh, stimulations rather than reading. Of course, I also like, like reading myself, but then time may change, may have changed and then learners, young people just like videos a lot more uh, than reading. Um, my second reaction to Professor Krashen's enlightening talk is, 
Um, Professor Kershaw said that we should give learners more choices, but then I'm a little stressed right now already. And you see, as teachers, we have so much marking to do, so much teaching preparation. Um, so when Professor Kershaw said there are four uh, features of um, um, optimal input, we have to provide input that's comprehensible, lots of input, extremely interesting, the content is rich, rich, but then do I have so much time to do all these actually? Um, where do I find the time to provide a lot of input to my students? And how do I ensure, ensure that the material is comprehensible? Surely I will have to go through all the videos, all the reading materials to check that they are comprehensible for which level of students. And then where do I get so much money to buy English video materials if videos, is, uh, videos are what my students prefer to, to learn English from rather than reading? Uh, so all these problems, um, and I also thought about, hey, um, in the old days, I, I have to admit, uh, I have to put my hand up for having learned English through watching friends. And when I watch video, after watching a video, I usually do these exercises, worksheets that I can download on the internet. But then how much time do we have as teachers to allow students to produce these worksheets for each of the videos that we can buy. Imagine that we have all the money in the world to buy so many video contents for our students. So how do we provide these worksheets and who will mark these worksheets uh, for our students if we really provide them all the choices uh, so that they can do whatever they want and they can learn from videos, which is what many of them prefer. So my solution I thought was Idiom strips. So what is it? It is a web-based app that can help uh, learners expand their vocabulary through watching any, any subtitled YouTube videos. Um, so it is a free app open to anyone and all ages of proficiency levels and we have got Facebook and Instagram. So um, I think we like yesterday when I heard uh, Professor Crescent's talk, he was talking about graded readers. But then how do we do that? Uh, how do we get access to lots of uh, free material if we don't have that budget to buy a lot of video materials? I thought, how about we unleash the power of online videos? Today we are bombarded by so many free providers of video content like BBC iPlayer, and then the, these are other providers in Hong Kong, but then I'm sure you are familiar with Vimeo and YouTube already. So there are many providers, they provide free content, can we allow our students to learn from this content? Uh, these media, internet media, online videos are also wonderful because they are accessible, people can watch anytime, anywhere, and then uh, they can watch on their smartphones, uh, and then people can watch, because there are so many videos on the internet of different lengths and durations, so there are videos that last for maybe five minutes, there are long videos that last for two hours, there are many choices that learners have depending on how much time uh, they have available. For example, when they're on the bus, they have got two hours, they can, um, or on the train, they have got two hours, they can uh, watch something on YouTube that lasts for two hours. So anyone can find anything that they watch on YouTube. And then because we have got online videos, uh, online videos like YouTube also provide the, the flexibility uh, for learners to switch on or off. Uh, captions or subtitles and then people can replay the videos anytime and at, they can adjust the speed so if the videos are too fast uh, learners can always uh, slow down using the uh, like built-in mechanism and then there is uh, an unlimited choice of videos and according to some research uh, 300 hours of videos are uploaded uh, to YouTube every minute so it's amazing, isn't it? So what, what does YouTube, what does Idiomstrip actually do? Uh, Idiomstrip is the app, vocabulary building app. And so it was developed as part of a research project that uses big data approach to examine vocabulary acquisition. Originally, like why, why is the app called Idiomstrip? That is because initially the project focuses on the learning of idiomatic expressions, but then uh, as we, continue 
the development. The app now covers uh, the teaching of English words as well. So again, people can create, users, students, teachers can create their accounts uh, for free uh, by clicking this uh, button that says like register for a new account and then they can sign in. Um, we don't record much information from users. We just need their emails. Uh, how do they want to uh, call themselves and then they create any password they, that they like. Um, so actually, I need to explain what is meant by idiomatic expressions. So um, idiomatic expressions are um, contain many things. It could be idioms, it could be speech formulae, like good morning, good afternoon, how do you do, uh, conversational routines, uh, like uh, I need to come clean, and then uh, proverbs, too, uh, too much coke spoils, uh, the broth, uh, and so on. So there are many expressions like this um, that are the result of habitual usage of native speakers of English. There are some more examples for you here. So explaining cats and dogs is what we consider idiomatic expression. Here comes the bus. Here comes is another expression. You are unbelievable, uh, meaning the opposite maybe, um, or like literally. Let's hear it for X. Uh, when you watch the video, uh, like X Factor on television, you would know, uh, let's hear it for X, is um, said when someone, uh, like um, at the end of a talk show, at, at the end of a show where people have found the champion and then let's hear it for someone means uh, let's clap our hands for that person. So there are many idiomatic expressions like this. Um, and then these expressions are very prevalent, common. According to some research, um, actually 52% of our speech is made up of uh, these idiomatic or formulaic expressions. Huh. So um, even though th these expressions are so very common in uh, English speech and writing, uh, learners of English have tremendous problems with using these expressions. So some time ago in Hong Kong, there was this uh, interview uh, on the streets of Hong Kong, some journalists asking people, like if you go to a restaurant and you have been waiting for half an, half an hour and the food still uh, hasn't arrived, so what should you say? And then uh, these uh, uh, past uh, pedestrians, these people on the street said, um, so they would say, uh, you missed the order, I've waited for so long uh, to the waiter. And then these are some other options that uh, some Hong Kong learners suggested. But then these suggestions are all wrong because they are not idiomatic. This is not how native speakers of English would say uh, to a waiter when they, have waited for so long for their food to arrive. Excuse me, uh, yes. Dr. Lin, you have five minutes to go. Okay, Understood. thank you. So let me be very quick. So what does idiom strip does? Uh, what does idiom strip do? do? Um, so what it does is uh, learners can choose any video they want and then they can view the glossary that my system generates automatically. And then there are some um, that people can click the definitions, click to see definitions and examples uh, of these words and phrases, uh, expressions, and then they can watch the video and complete some multiple choice questions. And then there is automatic marking. So there are some special features. It's self-directed language learning. The whole process is completely automated. Uh, and then there is a large database. The database can teach and identify and teach uh, 50,000 idiomatic expressions in English. And then there is there are games, there is a teacher interface and it's completely free. Um, it can be used in a classroom or at home and then people can find videos, uh, look up items and learners can earn badges. Their names can show up on the leaderboards if they perform very well. And then there are flip flashcards for revision. So for learners, uh, people can watch whatever they like. They can learn in a relaxing environment, no judgment, just rewatch if they get the item wrong. And then there is auto scoring. And then everyone has complete control over what they want to learn. They can play back the videos for as many times as they want, and then they can alter the playback speak. And, and everyone can fit everyone's, uh, the, the software can fit everyone's schedule. Um, and then for teachers, um, teachers can use the app for enriching their classroom uh, teaching. 
And then uh, teacher can also monitor their students' performance and recommend videos to students. And uh, uh, they can assign um, a new, they can give idiomship. Like this is what Hong Kong learners, Hong Kong teachers are currently doing. Many schools approached me in the past few months asking uh, to, have their, to have their students enrolled in the program. Um, so teachers require their students to use idiom strip every day. So we have got our Facebook. Let me just use a few minutes, like two or three minutes to give a quick walkthrough of uh, my interface. So uh, this is idiom strip. And then but once you have created the account, you can log in. So I'm logging in as a teacher. So obviously a teacher's view will be different from the student's view. So now uh, let me show you what can the students see by turning on the uh, student mode. So when students log in to idioms troop, this is what they see. They see a new flashcard, a new idiom being introduced every day. So someone, everyone learns something new every day. So then they can search for, uh, this is the idioms troop interface. People can search for any video they want on YouTube. So this software, this app is actually linked with uh, YouTube. And so all the new videos can be searched using this search bar. And then learners can also um, look at uh, the recommendations from their teachers and classmates and from my team of uh, researchers. So for example, I want to watch the video, uh, watch a video about Tokyo. I can search for that, or I can actually choose any of the videos here. Uh, like you can see, I wonder, uh, I wonder if you can see um, that there are, there is the number four and there is the number one here. So my system automatically classify the difficulty level of each video. So it here four means that this video in level four in terms of speed. So this video is very, very fast. And then in terms of vocabulary, this video is very easy. So it gets a pepper of, it gets one chili. So let's say I go to any video I like, and then I just click at the background, uh, the, the system will scan for obscene language in appropriate language. So you can be sure that your students would be watching uh, non-violent, non-obscene videos. So uh, this is a video about earthquakes. So again, we can see like four uh, in terms of speed and two in terms of lexical difficulty. And then these are the items that learners can like, for example, take into account. When learners don't know what is meant by taking into account, they can click on this button and then the system will take learners to the dictionary entry. So to see what is meant by take into account and then they will see examples as well. And then learners can bookmark this item for later revision. Um, and then they can watch this uh, video uh, and then after watching this video, I mean, they can change the speed of this video using the buttons down here. And then after watching the video, because I haven't got a lot of time, I will just move on and not watch the video. Um, actually, when learners watch the video, they can play the subtitles or caption depending on their needs. Um, and then they can do a few exercises. They are all auto marking exercises, so they can do fill in the blanks. So if learners have watched the video, they would know how to select the correct answer. Uh, but if the learners don't know how to select the correct answer, they can press hint. And then they will be taken to the right moment of the video where this line was set. So if we play this video, we can, learners can re-listen to what this part is. So they can just look up their answer this way. So when they are done, they can press submit and then there will be auto scoring. So you can see um, that there are other functions as well. They can try other exercises. There is the speaking exercise. There is the spelling exercise, which is the traditional hangman exercise. And then learners can also, uh, I'm just quickly going through things. Sorry about this, if, if I could have two more minutes. So on the dashboard, students can see they are like, for example, I'm currently level two, but then I can accumulate more points so I get points for every video I watch. And as I get more points, I get upgraded to the next level. And then I can see what badge I get. So all the students in the same class would have their name show up here. And then all the learners can join the world leaderboard where they can see uh, how, like where they rank in terms of the world record. 
Um, so uh, this is the, there is the flashcards for students to do revision and then people have vocabulary diary where they have got bookmarked items and then they can see all their track records, uh, each item. I think you can watch, uh, explore, I, I hope you uh, colleagues, uh, all the teachers. Berlin. Yes. Uh, your presentation is very interesting, but uh, yes. I would like to request Sorry. you to conclude. Yes, I will conclude now. So um, yeah. today I haven't talked to you about the teacher's interface, uh, but then I think you can look at my PowerPoint slides. And uh, if you contact me, I will give you access to the teacher's interface where you can have all your classes, your students' performance uh, like this. Uh, you, so you can, that's why colleagues in Hong Kong give uh, their students uh, idiom strip as their daily exercise uh, during uh, COVID-19. Actually, we have got 8,000 users currently. Um, so actually, your students can also like our Facebook. Uh, we also post daily uh, idioms, uh, idiom of the day posts. And then we have got more new functions coming up. So please watch this space, uh, join our uh, program. 